go have my trusted diet coke. Where to find food photography props. What's up YouTube and welcome or welcome back to my channel. On this channel we talk about everything to do with food photography so if that interests you then click subscribe down below. First of all I'd like to say I'm sorry for missing last week's upload but with family and friends visiting, my husband's birthday and just working every single day last week I was just completely burnt out and I just did not have the energy or the time to get this video recorded for you. But I'm back this week to record it and we'll just get on like normal with a video every Thursday. So you guys really like my food photography prop videos I've done in the past so I thought it's about time I did another one because it's been a while since I talked about props. So I went over to Instagram and asked what you guys want to know about food photography props and the question I got back the most was where do I buy my props from? I thought that's a really great idea for a video. So I'm going to go through 10 of my top or favourite places to buy food photography props. Just a little heads up some of these are UK only because that is where I am based which is one of the reasons I don't talk about where my props are from a lot of the time because not all of you or very few of you are actually from the UK like me but I've gone on to Google and tried to find some rough alternatives to the shops so at least you can kind of get a similar idea or feel for the shops that I'm talking about if that makes any sense. Number one on my list so the first place I'm going to talk about is big supermarkets. These have been an absolute lifesaver during lockdown because I'm not sure about the rest of the world but here in the UK everything but supermarkets has been shut for over a year now. Things are starting to open up a little bit again now but during last year if you didn't go to a supermarket you didn't go out. All or most of these supermarkets have a really great home section so as you're browsing for your food you can have a lovely stroll into their homes, there's pans, plates and it's just hard not to buy things all the time. One shop I like in particular here in the UK is Sainsbury's. I have bought I think 50-60% of all of my props from Sainsbury's. US alternatives to these supermarkets that I'm talking about, so in the UK I'm thinking Sainsbury's, Tesco's, Morrison's, the US alternatives would be I think I looked at Kruger and Public. Let me know in the comments below if you bought any props from them because obviously I've never been into one of those shops in my life. Another one is the big UK giant Asda which is owned by the US giant Walmart. So there you kind of have a sense of exactly what I'm talking about. Some of the props I've got from these shops would be these lovely bowls and this jug. These are both from Sainsbury's so like I said Sainsbury's absolute favourite of mine. They have a lovely home section and a lot of their things come in this lovely matte finish which as I've talked about before is so great for food photography. Pros and cons of supermarkets. So pros, really great value, always have a changing selection so you've got plenty to choose from and they're reliable. You can go in and you know exactly where you're going to go to and you can probably always find something. Cons, it can feel quite generic, they're very easy to come by so you may see a lot of people with the same things, maybe a little bit plain, but still really great options there. Number two on my list is shops like Dunnell, so this is kind of like quite a classic homey shop, I think a US alternative would be Bath, Bed and Beyond, I think, I think you got that right. These, like supermarkets, obviously because they're home shops, have a great section for home things. This could be things like um, your fabrics, like linens or tablecloths or just general serveware as well. So the things like serving dishes are a really great place to find in home shops because they're going to be a really good value as well. Like supermarkets, you're not going to find anything out of the ordinary or anything quirky or nothing with too much character in them. They're going to be quite plain. Number three on my list is TK Maxx. The US alternative to this is TJ Maxx, I think they're owned by the same people. To explain this to anybody that doesn't know either of those, it's like an outlet for designer brands. So the great thing about those is you have such a wide variety of options all under one roof and you can definitely almost always 
find something amazing in there. Something I bought from TK Maxx recently was this little wood sort of placemat and I think they have a really good wood section in TK Maxx at the moment and that's one of the pros and sort of a con with them as well. They change up all of the time but then if you want to get something again you're very unlikely to find it and they only tend to have one or two of the same things. They don't stock big amounts of things because it's just an outlet. They're just selling off random bits and bobs that haven't sold elsewhere. They're great. Also, really great value. Like this was a couple of pounds. Amazing. Definitely a great place to find something a bit more unique, but for also a really great price. A really great price, which don't usually go hand in hand that often. Number four on my list is the massive Swedish giant IKEA. I'm pretty sure every single person watching this video has heard of, if not been into an IKEA, I got stuck in that rabbit hole for hours looking at absolutely everything because they have absolutely everything. Because they have everything, it becomes a really great place to find props. One of my favourite things to get from shops like IKEA are glasses. They're quite fragile so you want to buy them quite cheap and you want to buy a few of them at a time in case they break. I've seen people dropping ice cubes into glasses and then smashing on a shoe. So it's good to have backups of backups. And this is really good and it's always a really good value. Other things that are great to buy from Ikea are your sort of like big utensils like mixing, mixing, spoon, mixing spoons, whisks or wooden spoons and things like that that can be used in many props but aren't ever going to be the main focus. The why I say maybe not the main focus is because it's always quite plain, boring and a bit generic. You can look at a plate and say that's from Ikea. Everybody's got it. However, pro, great price great amount of things in the shop. They're literally in every big city, so you know you're gonna be able to find one. Number five, I wanna do a full on 360 and go to the most, the complete opposite of Ikea, and that is charity shops. So other places like charity shops would just be kind of market stalls or I think Americans would call car be sales, yard sales, things like that. One thing I have here, it's not quite from a charity shop, but it's it was from a little market stall on a Christmas market, and I've had this for about 11 years now, and I love it, it's so wacky. You're not gonna be able to find these in your regular shops, and these charity shops or yard sales, things like that, they're the place to find something really unique and with tons of character. So that would be a massive pro. And generally, it's always pretty cheap as well, I mean, don't walk into a vintage shop and expect it to be cheap. You're probably going to be paying quite a lot there. Cons of these shops or like yard sales would be that there's no guarantee to find something. You walk into a big shop and you know there's going to be loads of options. I have walked into many, many charity shops and seen nothing but ugly looking pots. But sometimes when you go into that charity shop and you find the most perfect dish or the most perfect plate and every shop you've been to is completely worth it but it does take time to find something great there's definitely no guarantee you're going to find something and you're very unlikely you're going to be able to get more than one of it as well number six and that is h&m i don't think i need to find a u.s alternative because i'm pretty sure these are in the u.s as well i think it's another swedish brand i mean the swedish do things very well h&m is actually a fashion brand but they have a really great home section they've got some lovely plates and some lovely napkins lovely matte cutlery as well because this is super trendy and super stylish at the moment full disclosure this isn't actually from h&m but they do exactly the same as this in h&m They're not the cheapest place to get props, but they're certainly not the most expensive. So they're kind of in that middle on price. They will be super stylish and contemporary. So if you go for a more of a rustic style, you're probably not gonna find something you like there. But I go for quite a more minimalistic contemporary style. So there is some really nice pieces for my style in there. It's completely up to you if you like the things in these shops or not. A pro and a con of H&M would be that they change quite a lot because obviously they go with fashions and styles. So if you find something once, unless you're super quick and you want it again, you're probably not gonna find exactly the same thing again. Another sort of con would be a lot of the home stuff is only online. I mean, I've been into a lot of H&M's and personally, from experience, I don't see really any of the home stuff in the shops. 
and sometimes I like to feel the props. I don't always like to buy my props online because I don't feel like you get a full sense for what it's going to look like in a picture from the online picture. Okay, it makes sense in my head. Number seven, and that is your more sort of bargainy home shops. The one in the UK in particular I want to mention is Wilco's. I have got so many props from there, some of my favourite things from Wilco's. So US alternatives to Wilco's and other UK bargain shops like B&M would be Best Buy and Target. I think that Target is quite a broad thing, I think everything came under Target when I was looking on this website. This is one of my favourite props. This is actually from Wilco's. It was like 50p each. I got about five or six of them. I think one or two have broken already. If you've looked at many of my photos, you'll see that I use this quite a lot. Finding props you love at a, re a cheap price like this is great because you can get loads of them. So if you're doing a big scene or you want them stacked up, having lots of the same thing is really handy, which is another kind of pro of the cheaper props because you don't want to spend an absolute fortune on one plate. Shops like these are a really great place to start buying props because you can get so many things ticked off your list. I have got so many props from Wilco, give me a few trips and I would probably redo my whole prop collection in some of the best, biggest bargain shops, the great. Cons would, kind of, would sort of be similar to the big supermarkets, you're not going to get anything super quirky or super unique. Number eight would be Etsy and other sort of handmade online shops, like not on the high street. I think that I think they deliver to the US as well. These places can be very expensive, but they have some amazing, unique pieces full of character. This is the sort of place that you go for your one or two show pieces, not of any of the extra fluff. This would be the thing that you want to really concentrate on. You wouldn't go and kit out your whole prop collection from Etsy or these handmade places because it would cost you a fortune, it really would. So a few of the things that I find really great to buy from Etsy, things like linen napkins, these are obviously quite small ones so they're nice to just tuck in and they're a really great quality. Other things would be ceramic bowls, ceramic plates, little kind of dip bowls. The more handmade ceramic things are a really great find on Etsy, but you can also find rustic cutlery and things like that. Etsy Pros would be like handmade, unique, the more one of a kind statement pieces to your collection. Cons of things like Etsy or other handmade places would be they're very expensive. The time it takes to arrive can be a bit ridiculous. I mean, even just these napkins ended up taking a month to get here and I've had things take a lot longer. If they're coming from all over the world, obviously you have to expect that the shipping times can be very vague. Place number nine, so we're definitely getting to the end of our list now, would be things like Facebook Marketplace or Gumtree or the many other things like that going about. You can find some really great quirky pieces, especially things that would normally cost you quite a lot of money, like a chopping board. Buying them secondhand through shops like this is a really great way of getting things like that for quite a bit less money. Sometimes you will be absolutely amazed with all of the wonderful pieces that people are selling on secondhand, or sometimes even giving away. Some people just want to get rid of something and you might look at it and think that will be an amazing food photography prop. Obviously, like the charity shops and yard sales, this isn't a guarantee, so a con from sites like this is you can't guarantee you're going to be able to find something and you're certainly not going to be able to find it again if you've got it. Number 10, and this is probably one of my favourites, so I've saved the best to last because this is free. You can find so many amazing food photography props in your own home. I have got a whole video here going through all of the props, or not all of them because there's so many, so many food photography props that you can find in your own home that you probably didn't even realise you had or would be very good for props. You can also ask friends and family if they've got anything lying about that they don't use anymore that they can give to you. For example, this, this little kind of terracotta jar and this great fancy mini pie sort of tin were both just given to me because someone was never going to use them and you I'd like them. If you don't ask, you'll never know. But getting free photography props is absolutely amazing and who's going to turn down free props? 
that is it for today's video guys i hope you liked it i know i've probably blabbered on for a bit this is going to take some editing i think this video is probably about an hour long now so definitely going to cut that down quite a lot if you like this video guys give it a thumbs up let me know in the comments below where you like to get your food photography props from and i'll see you all in next week's video where i will be talking about how exactly i use props in my food photography to create depth to your image and how to not go overboard with your props so the tips I use for keeping it nice and simple. If you enjoyed this video guys and you want to look at more food photography prop videos I've got, I will leave these two videos linked in the description below and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!